you know, I looked at Paul's 20 years as a death sentence, to be quite honest. This isn't 20 years you sentenced Paul to death. A death sentence because 27-year-old Paul Smith is mentally ill and locked up in Maryland's only maximum security prison, the North Branch Correctional Institute in Cumberland. As far as we know, he's not receiving any treatment. Medication? Not that we're aware of. Convicted of a string of unarmed home burglaries, Paul was sentenced to a staggering 80 years, 60 of which were suspended. And Paul has by far gotten more than people who have taken someone else's life. Paul's parents further allege he has been held in isolation here since 2009 because of his inability to conform to prison rules. The Department of Corrections calls it segregation. The Smiths call it solitary confinement. For people with mental illness, uh, solitary confinement is shattering. Uh, they get sicker, they mutilate themselves, they attempt suicide, and uh, often they succeed. Over the last two years, the Smiths say the prison upped his punishment, preventing all calls and visitors indefinitely, even his own parents. That's probably one of the most destructive things that uh, you could possibly do to someone with mental illness. That is, uh, number one, going to create great suffering, and number two, almost certainly going to aggravate his mental illness. It may also be illegal under federal law. Every court that has ruled on the issue has said that keeping people with mental illness in solitary confinement violates the Eighth Amendment. It constitutes unconstitutional, uh, cruel, and unusual punishment. We have grave concern for his welfare. Diagnosed with autism and ADHD at a young age, Paul was later treated for bipolar disease, paranoia, impulse control, and explosive disorders, among others. Paul was about two years old in this photo. He won an array of Special Olympics medals, but there were years the family lived in fear, fear that mentally ill Paul would eclipse kind-hearted, loving Paul. He was in my car, and he had took out a knife. And he said, this is a very sharp, sharp knife. And he proceeded to cut his seat. No, you better get ready for, you know, war. It was war. It was war. The Smiths tried conventional punishments, like grounding him or taking away his television. It never worked. And if you did any of those, there's hell to be paid. There was a huge tension. He was going to retaliate. It wasn't like he was going to sit in his room, well, fine, I don't like my parents anymore. That's when property was going to get destroyed. You were going to have to barricade yourself in a bedroom to keep him from getting at you. When Paul turned 18, he gained the legal right to refuse medication and other treatment. Maryland laws need to change. Get my son the help that he greatly and gravely needs right now. The Smiths are not asking for Paul to be freed from prison. They are begging the system to provide him with help. It just never goes away. No matter where Paul's at, no matter where he's, you know, we're always thinking about him. We're thinking of the next way to help him. A lot of doors have been closed in our faces, but you know what? Someday we'll open the right door.